do you remember when we were children, and the missionaries came to tell us about the gods? They told us we could see them in the stars. And we snuck out one night and climbed the watchtower in the old fort because we thought we could see them better from up there. That fort burned down a few years ago when we cast the missionaries out. It was the missionaries who set fire to it. They didn't want us to be able to use it. Shame. There was history in that fort. I miscalculated many things since this began. I'm relieved you weren't one of them. It's a good thing we didn't hang you. I always knew this path would have consequences, but I never wanted to see Kratum suffer on my behalf. I don't think I can stay here any longer. I am told the Inquisition is gathering an army, that they have sent messengers to bargain with rulers from distant lands. Kratum is not built to withstand a siege. If war is coming, I should be doing what Theos is doing. I will need allies. Allies and a stronghold that can resist an invading army. Osionis. They have held off many would-be invaders, and their king has no love of the Inquisition's faith. I wonder, would he listen? Not very helpful. Another turn, Inquisitor. <laughs> I ask again, Yovara Ixensios, do you confess to these heresies of which you stand accused? Do you confess to apostasy? I confess to renouncing a mistake. Do you confess to conspiracy against the one true faith? I confess to opening minds. Do you confess to false prophecy? I confess to following a false prophet. Indeed. And where might we find this heretic? He wears the robes of a Grand Inquisitor. You have no followers here, heretic. Your lies hold no sway in the court of the penitents. Only my truth, then. Another turn. <laughs> no! Wait! Wait! I'm ready. I'm ready. You are ready to give a confession? 
I am ready to hear one from you. When you get to the bottom, haul her up here. Let me know if it's safe. After what seems like an eternity, your rapid descent comes to an abrupt end. You remain still for a moment while your heart settles and your eyes adjust breathing in stale, forgotten air. Before you, a narrow and eroded walkway becomes faintly visible in the dim light, cutting a winding path through a cavern so expansive it seems a world unto itself. In the distance, you can make out the cold gleam of living Adra veins that spike and fork in and out of view from the murky depths beneath, their glow a faint and fleeting guide along the ancient trail. You look above at the opening you jumped through, now barely a speck of light like some distant star alone in the cosmos and forever out of reach. Your only way lies ahead. Hey. Well, that went better than I expected. Everyone all right? No shattered knees? Good. Just me, then. That was bracing. Hey. Parathis! You're not getting through me. Gotcha! Leave it to me! That's it!
Hello, brother. It has truly been ages. You are so different now from who you were then, yet much remains the same. Old troubles with a new face. What is it that has brought you here? I'd hoped after our last discussion you would find what you sought. Has it eluded you all this time? I can only guess your presence here has something to do with Theos. The energy of this place changes when he is near. I don't know what he has done, but I do know of the souls that pass through here now. They do not come by choice. After all this time, he would still stand against the tide. I will tell you what I remember. I can see his influence, still hanging like a weight about your neck. So it always was. He had inspired something in you. We spoke of him the last time you were here also. It was just after the trial. You were agitated. I think because you started to consider that what I was teaching may have been true. That the gods aren't real. That can't be. We, we've been following them for thousands of years. If that's true, she's not serious. <laughs> Perhaps not to her. Many are those whom the gods have scorned. This is petty retribution. <laughs> There's a theory puts my boldest to shame. But we ourselves have seen the gods' influence. What I taught was that the gods whose faith we had been spreading were not gods at all, but something else entirely. Something created by people. They were conceived by Engwith, a society of high minds and broad concerns. Theos' people. In their time, every people worshipped its own gods. Sometimes they warred over it. After a few wars of their own, the Anguithans sought an end to it. They devoted all their energy to finding the true creators. Generation after generation, they prodded and worked the stitching of the world and unlocked its secrets. One day, they found an answer. Except the answer was no answer at all. There were no gods to be found. Or if there ever were, they were gone. It shook them, this finding. If they could discover this on their own, how long until others would? How long before war and chaos reigned over a world without consequence? But they had mastered many things in their pursuit of these answers. And with their mastery, they crafted their own gods to fill the void and sent missionaries to the corners of the world to spread their faith. The Anguithan missionaries all knew it, but they never told the rest of us. They meant it to be a secret that died with them, and in the end, they allowed their bloodlines to fade from memory. I had been assigned to join a few of them at a temple. I found the door to their chambers closed, but the room was stone and the door thin. Their voices carried. I heard... enough. I investigated the things they spoke of, and everything was there, just as they said it'd be. I never thought of it as faith, but I think you are right to call it that. Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. That was my faith. I became a missionary because the gods brought me hope that I wanted to bring to others. For a time, the truth sent me to a dark place. Then the day came when I realized nothing had changed, that I still had a purpose, and the purpose was the same and it was worth living for. I began questioning the other missionaries in public, exposing their parlor tricks. In time, their following became mine. You asked me this once before. Nothing I can say would be any proof, 
and it may be certainty your soul craves. Resolution. But if you are bound for the same place Theos directs these souls, you will see for yourself as you once did. Everyone faces this truth at one time or another. Few confront it. Few have the stomach to ask what if. And in avoiding the question, they deny themselves an identity of their own. What if all the tragedy, all the persecution, came in defense of an imposter? That's not... That, that can't be right. Aethys, he... He's done miracles for people. The power of the gods is undeniable. The truth of the story they weave is not. What if it were forbidden knowledge rather than fault that earned your doom? What of your guilt? I have seen with my own eyes the deceptions of my goddess. The Watcher has shown me as much. But it was not until now that I understood how truly desperate she was. The depths of her deception. You speak of her deceptions, but what of your own? Was it her words that led you down your path? Or was it the absence of her words? A gap that you filled with your own broken thoughts. What if you had always been alone, without guidance? Then it's because I've managed to find my own direction. But how many can find purpose and satisfaction in the reality you offer? Would it comfort the grieving families to know that their children were hollow-born over a war of ideas? Would it quell the riots in Defiance Bay? However the gods were created, they exist now. That's what matters. It is no offer of mine, this reality. It exists whether you accept it or not. And these things you speak of, these ills in need of a cure, ask yourself, if the gods had no influence, would these things exist at all? Or would the world be better off? If all our common threads are spun from a lie, what's left to bind us together? All of us across Aeora are trying to survive. To make sense of the world, what could better bind us together than that struggle? We'll find our own truths. Make them if we must. We don't need an ancient lie to bolster us. United, the Anguithans created gods. Mortal men and women coming together to do the impossible. Let us surpass them. What if even mastery over all things cannot answer the most basic of questions? I stopped asking those questions long ago. It is enough to care for those we love with the time we have in this life. A question is a journey, and a journey is what makes us who we are, it's true. But when one journey leads only to the next, then where may one find rest? I ask these things not to trouble you, but to show why they must be confronted. No answer is simple. But somewhere between them all lies a truth so beautiful, not even a god could conceive it. Do we not owe ourselves a chance to find our part in it? That is the thinking that has shaped the world, for better or worse. I've been alone here with my thoughts for so long now. I've found peace with my failures, and with my punishment. I no longer curse fate for what might have been. But there is one thing that has clawed and scraped at my mind all these years. One thing that will not be put to rest until I know. Until I understand. I need to know why you chose to remain with the Inquisition, even after you'd learned the truth. Do you... Do you remember?
Wodeka gifted him a great many things, but his ability to manipulate was always his own. Good. Good. The things I taught, the things I believed, I needed to hear that. I needed to know it wasn't because... Since we were children, you had heard both sides, seen everything. If not you, then who? I expected dissent, but I needed to know that true faith would prevail. Perhaps I've been wrong to place so much importance on one person's actions. It was all I could do to feel like there was an answer. Even knowing what you've told me. Some part of me knows it doesn't truly answer what I wished to know, nor will an eternity of silent contemplation. I will have only my guesses and suspicions, and that will have to do. And what of your understanding of our past? Are you at ease with the choice you made? At first I thought this might be the source of your soul's anguish, but now I see I was mistaken. You are not divided on this matter. You have put it behind you. It is with Theos that your agony lies, in sun and shadow. Your questions are not for me, but for him. And it may be that only an answer from the mouth of Theos himself will satisfy your needs. Yet if there is anything I can tell you that would be of use, ask and you shall know. He cares only for the secret he keeps locked away. He destroys anyone who might discover it, no matter their chances. That's why he's always favored Woodica. It isn't in her love of promises or justice. It's her disregard for the rules. Her willingness to do what is necessary. To Theos, she's not a deity, but an ally with which to conspire. When her power waxes, she does as she pleases with this realm, as well as hers. And she wants that secret guarded as much as he. If Theos succeeds, there will be a shift in the balance of power among the gods. Wudika was vanquished once, when the other gods decided she had gone too far, and her power diminished. With this infusion, there is no telling what she will do. The only certainty is that there will be chaos in their realm, as well as ours. In a matter of speaking, this is Braith Yamin, the court of the penitents. Souls are confined here until they repent. They must beg the forgiveness of a god, pledge their soul to them, and they will be lifted from this place to the world above. In truth, they receive leniency, but not true mercy. The spite of Wudika is eternal. They linger above, at the side of the old court, and are not permitted to leave the island, forever severed from the cycle. This prison was full once in the days of the Inquisition, but time weathers all things, even will. I'm the only tenant who remains. Yet, I feel their presence strongly now, as it was in the beginning. You have brought many of them here. They cry out for the judgment of Theos, you have struck some bargain with the gods, then. They aid you because they would bend you to their own purposes. Angwith built gods from ideals, and an ideal on its own is a grotesque and vicious thing. But these souls, these forgiven the gods have bequeathed you like chattel. They were loyal followers in life. They will be with you to the very end. Last time someone asked me that, I was bound to an iron wheel with a broken spine. There are many things I've come to doubt about the choices I made in life, but that trial was my one moment of certainty. 
even without a chorus of gods to tell me I had been right. The gods need to be reminded that we have a spirit, and that spirit is proof against their power. They have the power to manipulate and confuse and ruin us, but not to change our will. I will remain here until the world crumbles and fades from existence with joy in my heart, knowing I've shown them what they truly are. Theos will not wait for you. If you do not catch up to him now, you may never find him again. It is a cruel fate to wait all this time to be reunited with my only brother, only to be forced to part soon after. But then, what is life but a series of brief encounters with those we love? I suppose I have waited long enough, and I do not wish to delay you any further. Come, let's be done with this once and for all. I am ready. Hey. So, it's true. The gods are a sham that people have followed for thousands of years. <laughs> well, doesn't that just beat all? Here I was, wondering all this time whether all these terrible things were people's fault or the gods. Turns out they might be the same thing. I wonder how things would have gone different 15 years ago if the Raid Sarens had been told their god was made in some forge or kiln someplace. Would we still have gone to war? I could see the rebellion still happening, but I don't know that they would have invaded. I don't know. When Woden left for war, we, uh, had a fight. As brothers will. About him going off to war. He was set on it. My parents warned him. They said you get a new country with every trip across the border, but your god, you only get the one. And me? I didn't know who was right. All I knew was I didn't want him to go. It's the same for families as it is for gods. You only get the one. And I said every vicious thing I could think of, trying to change his mind. He brushed it off. Just got me madder, of course, him being so calm. He said I should come with him, but he'd understand if I didn't want to. I told him he'd better be able to face his god one day and answer for what he'd done. He said he'd keep that in mind. And then, he was gone. By the time I had cooled off, months had passed. One morning it dawns on me that my brother always knew better than me. If he was so sure of what he was doing, then I should be there with him. Packed my things, and was on the road that same morning. Of course, what I didn't know then was he'd already changed his mind. By that time, he was dead on that field. Crossed my mind. You live in a place like Gilded Vale. You don't have a whole lot else to do other than think about things you don't want to think about. I hope that wasn't it. I hope he went there because it's what he thought was right. But it seems I'm not meant to know. If I'd have left with him, we'd both be dead, so... I don't know why I bother thinking about it. I found my own way in the end, and it wasn't my brother's and it wasn't my god's. I don't know if it was right. But I couldn't abide what Widewin was doing to his own. God or not. I don't regret it. Whether Widewin was Aeothus, well, it hardly seems to matter after what we just heard. And all these questions I've been trying to figure out. I 
think I just miss my brother. Still one more mess we gotta straighten out. Come on, then. I still owe you one. We've been lied to. Our whole lives, and many lives before that. And it's led us to put our faith in a pantheon of gods that never deserved it in the first place. Indeed. And I fear what would become of the world if people lost that mooring. Even widespread belief in the gods seems like it's barely enough to correct our aimlessness and contain our depravity. I've also been thinking. There won't be much left of Theos by the time you're done with him, if I know how you operate. That will leave the Leaden Key headless. Someone will need to fill that void. Someone who can clean up the mess that Theos has made of it. Then let's face Theos. When this is all over, I'll remember what we've been through. I'll see the Leaden Key transformed into a stronger, better guide for Kith. And I won't make the mistakes Theos did. Hey.